guys, what's going on? It's Colin here again, back with another engine video. Uh, this is a very crusty Briggs Model A. The serial number indicates it to be a 1942, and uh, I picked this thing up off my buddy Jake. He basically gave it to me because he was just going to keep it as a shelf piece, and he's like, you know what, you have a chance of maybe doing something with it. So if it's not junk, then take it, get it running, add it to your collection, and if it is junk and I, you want it to just be a shelf piece, then give it back. Because <laughs> um, I'm honestly not sure about this one. We're going to crack it open and see what it looks like on the outside. I mean on the inside, but in terms of the out, outside condition, it's rough. Like Briggs Model KR4 rough, if not a little bit worse. Um, but it's mostly there. We got the gas tank, which is nice. We're missing the air cleaner but it's the later style, um, so that should be a little easier to find. The crank is there, and the spark plug tab is there, everything's there, but in terms of uh, rust and whatnot, we have the, um, the air shroud delete option. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this is completely rusted down to basically nothing. That's how thick it should be for reference. So yeah, you can see the damage there. That's basically gone. I don't know if you can see it, but down in there, the teeth on that uh, gear that this engages are all rotted off too. So obviously it's been sitting outside for quite some time now, but um, yeah, it's kind of a neat piece. I've been wanting, looking for a Model A for a while now because I've got the Model B and I've got the Model K, so what I want to do is get this complete lineup. So I need the A, which I now have. I need a Z, which I'm probably going to skip because it looks so similar to the K. And then I need the ZZ, which is like the biggest one of the whole lineup. So, um, yeah, I'll find one of them eventually. But I might have a decent Model A here, so that would be kind of neat. But uh, either way, it actually surprisingly turns over at least three quarters of the way. It hits something stiff, so I have a feeling a valve is stuck or something like that. But um, I figured we could dive into it today, take a look, see what the insides look like. Who knows, maybe the insides aren't all that bad and we can save this thing. But, um, hey, worst case scenario, I'll give it back to Jake and he can use it as a shelf decoration. <laughs> or I'll keep it and use it for parts and find another one. We'll see. But, um, anyways, figured I'd make a video out of it because it could be neat. And uh, we could tear into this thing and see what the insides look like. So, without further ado, why don't we jump right into it? Actually, before we do that, I just realized this whole crank assembly has been brazed back on at some point, too. So some, this thing probably lived a pretty tough life. That's brazed there, it's brazed there, and it's brazed over there. So that's kind of interesting. I can't say I've seen that before. But anyways, now without further ado, let's dive right into this thing. All right, so uh, in between the last clip and this clip, I've gone ahead, well, it's been a little while, I should mention that, but I've gone ahead and I've had all these bolts soaking with croil. So hopefully, maybe there's some chance that they'll come out without breaking. Um, oh yeah, that loosened right up. So hopefully we can get these all out without snapping anything and uh, this thing will come apart somewhat nicely, but uh, I guess we'll see. <laughs> Who the hell knows if anything like this that's been sitting outside for so long. But hopefully everything will come out relatively smoothly. Well, surprisingly we got all the head bolts out pretty smoothly. They, uh, I guess the coil really worked its magic on those. Um, but. I forgot with these that before you pull the head, well, hey, we gotta get the spark plug wire off of here, which might be easy seeing as though half of it just snapped off right there. <laughs> um, so I guess I'm gonna have to get a new, at least a new um, screw for this plug. So that's out of there. I wonder actually if this plug will come out or not. I soaked it with coil. I don't know if it's gonna want to come out or not though. That one's too small. See if we can get a wrench on this. Oh wow, would you look at that, it popped free. It's kind of a neat plug, it's definitely old. Also, while I'm thinking about it, check out the rust damage on these things. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to get some new spacers if we get this thing running, because that's pretty impressive. This thing's obviously sat out in the weather for quite some time. Um, now we got two more bolts down here to take care of. So I just gotta grab a socket for them. These I forgot to spray with coil because I forgot they were there, so hopefully they come out okay. 
Oh yeah. No problem there. And on the other side, also have success. So that's pretty nice. <coughs> shroud off of here. Fair amount of crustiness in the bottom there. Go dump that in the garbage can. I think it goes without saying we're gonna have to find a new one of them. <laughs> that's pretty impressive amount of rust and rot there. Because that's what they're supposed to look like. And that's what we got. <laughs> so that's pretty impressive. Let's pop this head here. Actually not awful into here. We got a stuck intake valve, and yeah, I bet that exhaust valve is stuck too. I think it's coming up and hitting that. So I'm gonna go ahead and well, actually let's get this head gasket out of the way really quick. Let's see if I can't save it here. This is hard to do one-handed. Let's get this out of here. And then I was gonna say, I'm gonna go ahead and get those valves soaking with some croil. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, wire brush and wire wheel in here. See if we can't clean up this piston a little bit. That looks like an original asbestos gasket to me. <laughs> but yep, all right, I'll check back in with you guys in a second after I get this all cleaned up. All right, so I cleaned it up a little bit. I actually freed up this intake valve already, believe it or not. I shot a little croil in there, I tapped it down with the mallet, not expecting it to free up, and it just did. So that works. The exhaust valve is really stuck, like really stuck. And I realize that's because a lot of moisture has been getting up to that port. Um, but I cleaned up the piston here. There's no stampings in here that this is oversized. And the bore itself looks pretty darn clean. There's no scoring or anything in it. No, not really any rust to speak of. It's a little glazed. But the, uh, the piston doesn't have much of any slop in it, which is nice. So, who the hell knows? Maybe this thing might actually be somewhat decent. You never know. But, um, while I'm waiting for the coil to soak on this, I think what we're gonna do is get this carburetor out of the way, and, oh God, help us, we're gonna try and get this nut off of here. <laughs> Probably more than likely gonna have to cut this off and chisel it off and whatnot, and get a new one. Um, but I'll give it my best shot of getting it off there the way it is. And then we can pop the flywheel, take a look at the coil, which is probably completely trashed, but you never know. And uh, maybe pop it off the, the sump here too and take a look at that. So anyways, I'm going to pop you guys back up on the tripod and we'll continue disassembly here. This stuff is certainly a lifesaver. Go get yourselves a can of this. It's expensive, but holy crap, does it work good. Managed to crack this flywheel nut off with a pipe wrench. That came right off. All the bolts have come off right off so far. Freed up the valve. This one I got to move, so at least I could spin the whole engine, the engine over all the way. Um, so hopefully that won't be too bad to get out of there. And surprisingly, this coil actually doesn't look totally shot and waterlogged. So, <laughs> if the stars align here, there might actually be a shot that this coil is good, or at least usable. i got to admit, I'd be pretty shocked, but I've seen crazier things happen before. So, I think we're going to start, oh yeah, those points have got stuff growing on them. <laughs> I think we're going to start by cleaning up the points really quick, and um, I'll throw the flywheel back on, and we'll see what happens in terms of uh, getting some spark back here. All right, so I cleaned and get the points there. The thing will move, but this plunger is awfully sticky. Like it will, it will go up and down, but you have to be pushing on it to do it. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and pop these points out of here and we'll pull the plunger completely out. And then 
uh, will lubricate it and hopefully it will start moving on its own and then we'll give this the, uh, the spark test see what happens go ahead and yuck this out of here maybe <laughs> These are very delicate. You got to be careful when you're doing this that you don't destroy them. All right, so I just cleaned up that plunger a bit, and hopefully you can see it here. Over here. If you watch that, I'm going to spin this. It doesn't move much, but it's moving. So that should be good enough to uh, see if this thing's going to have spark. So what I'm going to do is just loosely throw this flywheel back on here after I clean up this taper really quick. Just a paper towel. Throw just a tiny bit of uh, coil on there so it slides easy. And uh, throw this back on here. Provided that I can get the key way lined up. Stick this through here. Maybe. <laughs> All right, I'm not seeing much. Let's try uh, cleaning this up a little bit up here and a different spark plug, see if that helps at all. I kind of doubt it. I think those points are pretty crusty. Um, I think I'm going to end up having to do points and condenser at a minimum to this thing. I might have a good set over in a bin on the other side of the garage here, I gotta see. Well, a used set, at least. Alright, I've got a new plug here. I'll zoom you guys in. Sorry the tripod has to be so far away. My garage is a little bit packed right now. Got a lot of projects going on at once, and a lot of customers machines in here at once. I'm going to angle that. Let's see. Holy crap, it's got spark! <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's shut the light off here. You see it sparking? Wow, I'm impressed. Those points were not uh, really not that great. But hey, it's got spark, so that's pretty cool. I'm honestly shocked that coil is still good too, with how much moisture was sitting in this thing. That's pretty impressive. All right, I guess next what I'll do is I'll try and free up this exhaust valve a little bit. Uh, it's been sitting with the coil on it for a little bit now, so hopefully, maybe it will go. What I always do for this, make sure you're not on the exhaust stroke, lube it up really good, and just very carefully... Very carefully, you want to tap on the head. Of course, it would help if you guys could see what I'm actually doing here. Um, you just want to make sure you're hitting it nice and square, otherwise you can bend the head of the valve which is obviously not what you want to do. And then to pop back up, what I was doing was I was taking a screwdriver and fitting it. Well, either using the cam like this, which is kind of stiff, not really recommended, or you can get under in here with the uh, screwdriver and pop up on it. Well, I've been working on this valve for a little bit now, and it's, it's pretty free. It's actually starting to go down on its own. It's a little sluggish, but I'm just gonna take the hammer and work it back and forth like this. I've also forgotten, forgot to mention earlier, this whole time I keep um, keep spraying coil in there, and I even went as far as to rotate the head of the valve like this a little bit as I was doing it, help work that oil down in there. I am not claiming by any means that this is the best way to do this. In fact, I'm sure it's definitely not, but it just happens to be the way that I do it. And it seems to work pretty well. I have had this technique let me down once or twice, though, so... Take that with a grain of salt, I guess. <laughs> there you go. Both valves are now free. 
So that's pretty cool. So now that they're both free, what I think we're going to do is uh, go ahead and pop them out of there. Hopefully this doesn't uh, take too much effort. But the way you do this is, uh, sorry it's so dark. The lighting, in here, I'm going to work on the lighting in this garage soon enough. I'm just going to get some fixtures and I'm going to install them. Um, <clears throat> but what I usually do for these, actually are these keepers or are these? First we're going to determine what holds the valve in. Sometimes it's a pin, there's a hole in the valve stem and there's a pin that goes through it. Other time it's got keepers like an automotive engine. But um, usually what I do is I jam two screwdrivers in like this on either side of the valve spring. Tap on the valve head here. Oh, they're keepers. <laughs> I just launched one of them across the garage, so that's going to be fun to find. But hey, now we know. And we can pop these out of there, because as you can see, that stem definitely needs a good cleaning. And so does the port, holy crap. <laughs> but let me go find this keeper that I absolutely launched and uh, get all these pieces together and then I'll check back in with you guys. So as you can see the coil definitely worked its way in there on both valves. This one's got some crap in it but uh, another good reason to pop the valves out is because check out all the crap that's in that port there. <laughs> that's years of moisture and crap that's accumulated. So it's always good to scrape that stuff out as you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and clean these all out, kind of as you're seeing here, maybe run some paper towels and cleaner through them a bit. And then also while we're in here, let's take a look at these seats. Hopefully they're not too bad because these are not removable. <clears throat> yeah, these will clean up. Ideally, you'd have a valve seat cutter and you'd just cut the valves and cut the seats and you lap it in for like two seconds and it's good. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those. My buddy does, but he's super busy and I don't always like to bother him for it when I don't need it. So I think for this one, we're just gonna lap the crap out of it and uh, hope for the best. So I guess next up, let's go ahead and uh, drain any oil that might be in here out and uh, we'll pop this engine off of its base here and uh, see how the crank and the rod and everything looks. And I guess the rings too will pop the piston out. So uh, let's get to it. All right, let's see, is there any oil in here? I'm gonna doubt it, maybe some. Let's see. Oh crap, it's almost full. <laughs> this thing's full of surprises. Ooh, it's definitely really old. It's got that like reddish tinge to it. Wow, that's, that's really old oil, but it's not super, super dirty. A little bit of sludge at the bottom. Nothing too awful, at least based on the screwdriver test. So I guess with that being said, let's see if this plug is gonna pop out of here. Which of course it is. <laughs> you know, it's funny, with both this and the Briggs Model KR4, they looked absolutely horrendous on the outside and I was thinking they were going to be nightmares to take apart and both of them almost every single bolt came right out like no problem granted I sprayed them with coil to you know prepare for that but still I can't believe how easily these things come apart all right I'm gonna go ahead and pop this thing off its base and see if any surprises await us in there I'm curious to see I know these Model A's originally had um, oil pumps I just don't know if by 42 they had switched over to splash lubrication or not. So I guess we're going to find out. Try and get some of this crap out of the way. Once again, they popped right free. <laughs> no fighting there. This last bolt here put up a bit of a fight because the result the head was basically rotted off of it. So I took the gas tank off to get to it a little bit better. Managed to uh, fit a 13 millimeter socket on there, or wrench on there rather, by pounding it on. And we cracked it loose and then the 916 did the rest. So 
So I'm gonna pop this out. We'll see if there's any chance of saving the original gasket. And interestingly enough, this does still have an oil pump in it. I thought around 42 is when they changed, but it must have been the very, very last ones that they did that didn't have one. Because I think they made these up till 45 or 46 or something crazy like that. Um, but everything on the inside is kind of gooped up with old oil, but it's actually not terrible. I can tell this oil pump is all plugged up though, so it's definitely a good thing we pulled it apart. But honestly, everything looks decent. Just needs a good cleaning. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna take you guys off the tripod again. Obviously all this dirt just fell in and I took it off, but even so, you can see we got some uh, sludge in there. Nice and tasty. It's a fair amount, actually. <laughs> so I have to clean that out. And on the insides here, again, there's dirt that fell in there. Honestly, not terrible. Just got that old baked on oil. It's covering everything. But, uh, like I said, not terrible. Not terrible at all. It's actually, aside from the oil, it's decently clean in there, and I'd rather it be all oiled up because that keeps it from rusting and whatnot. So, pretty happy with that. I guess what I'll do next is I'll go ahead and pop this oil pump out of here, and we'll pop the rod out and uh, shoot the piston out the top and we'll take a look at the rings and the rod and the crank and everything and see how good it is. So uh, let's get to it. couple scores in that you might be able to see there so either this thing got some dirt in it or it ran low on oil at one point those do not pass the fingernail test so that might have to be replaced there it goes probably a slight ridge at the top of the cylinder our piston. A little dirty. Piston looks good actually. And obviously as expected we got the same uh, same two ridges in this connecting rod up here. So I might end up sourcing a connecting rod for this. And as you can see our oil ring is completely plugged up with crap and carbon and stuff. So it's always a good idea to pop these things apart. Plus, as I mentioned, that oil pump is completely plugged up, so that can't be doing a heck of a lot. We gotta clean up these these uh, the piston where the ring goes, anyways. It's all carboned up, and the oil ring itself definitely needs to get, needs to get cleaned. But what you do to check the ring gap on these is you take the ring, throw it right in the dirt, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, in all seriousness, take it, clean it up a little bit, so there's just nothing to interfere here. I'm going to wipe out the bore, and you want to take the ring and squeeze it in so it fits, and take the piston, shove it down a little bit so it's nice and square, and wow, that actually looks pretty good. Gauges. There is a spec for what this should be. I don't remember it offhand. I'm going to have to look at my book. But these look pretty tight. Usually, I've gotten engines like this where you can freaking measure the, uh, the ring gap in like with a tape measure instead of feeler gauges. So I guess my bar is kind of low. Wow, that's pretty, that's pretty darn tight. 
I'm gonna have to pull up the uh, the spec here, but I might I might actually run these and clean them up and run them because they look pretty darn good in terms of gap. Wow, I'm impressed. I thought these would be totally shot. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder if this engine wasn't actually all that bad. It just sat outside for probably, I don't know, 40 years or something like that. I wonder if when it was put away, wherever that may have been, it wasn't actually in too bad a shape. Probably ran fine. Most of the stuff we're gonna end up working on is more damage from it sitting than anything. All right, so we're gonna check real quick to see if this bore is round. The way that you're supposed to do this is with a bore gauge, which I don't have. So the second most correct way to do this is with telescoping gauges and a micrometer. I have the telescoping gauges, I don't have the micrometer, but I have a nice set of dial indicators here, which should be good enough. Because um, even if they're not 100% accurate to the actual size, it will tell us uh, if it's, you know, we get the same reading twice, then we know we're good. Um, so the way that you do this, take your board or your telescope and gauge, and you want to get a reading in the bore. Pull that out, measure it. This should be a two and a quarter inch bore, I believe. reading a couple thousand undersized, so I probably did something wrong, or that more than likely there's actually probably some rust and crust in this bore. And then what you want to do is if you measure it this way first, then you want to measure it perpendicular to that at about the same height, and that will tell you if it's round. And now what you do after that that I'm going to do is also check how much it's tapered. So I'm going to measure probably at the very top of the bore, middle of the bore, and bottom of the bore, and we'll compare all those measurements. and. Uh, We'll see how this bore looks. So this is gonna be really boring, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this off camera. Alrighty guys, so I went ahead and measured the bore and I measured the crank and everything. And actually, really good news, I checked the Briggs Repairman's Handbook and, um, well, start off by saying I'm pretty sure these are accurate and good, but even if they're not, they can't be that far off. But assuming these are good, this bore has basically no wear on it. Because I was getting uh, 2.49, and it's, that's the minimum spec from Briggs. So assume it's 2.5, 2.51, even if it's a couple thousands off. Our bore is still pretty good, still very round. Um, the only issue I hit was towards the bottom where that rust is, and that's because I was hitting the rust and it made the uh, measurement too small, because the rust is sticking out a little bit. So I'm going to have to go ahead and hone this out a little bit, get that rust out of there. And then, also good news, um, when I first started measuring the crank on this, I thought that it was supposed to be a much bigger journal than it was. Um, but then I checked the repairman's handbook, and not only is our crank round, but it's within spec. So we don't need a crank. So that's very good news. Um, I think, however, I'm still probably going to go for a new rod because of that scoring that's in there. Um, I'm going to run it by a friend or two, see what they think, see if it's bad enough that they think I need a new rod. Usually if I see scoring like that, I just replace it because they're not that hard to come by. But um, I'm honestly not sure how hard it is to find a Briggs Model A rod. But this thing is kind of ridiculous. It looks so bad on the outside, yet everything on the inside is damn near perfect in terms of, like, you know, being in spec and everything. Um, it's... <laughs> It's actually in really, really good internal shape. So that's actually a good sign for possibly getting this thing running. Um, I have a, I, and I checked these rings too, by the way. These are perfectly within spec, because they were reading about 10 thousandths gap, and the spec for all Briggs rings is anywhere between 7 and 17, so those are all good. So it's almost like this thing really doesn't have that that many hours on it. It just sat outside for God knows how long. <laughs> But uh, either way, it's definitely good news, so um, I'm pretty happy about that. So I'm going to go double check on this rod, see what people think, and um, I guess if that's good, then we can go ahead and just get to cleaning this thing up, and we're going to have to hone out that cylinder, and then uh, 
hell, maybe we'll throw it back together and it will run. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to check on those things and then uh, we'll get back to working on this. All right, guys, sorry for the background noise here. It's just hot as hell today, so I got the fans running in the garage. But um, anyways, it's been a while since the last clip of this video was shot. And that's because A, I've been really, really busy with a bunch of stuff going on. And B, I've been hunting down parts for this engine. Um, so I called up my buddy Will Woodward. Um, he's got all sorts of Briggs parts for any Briggs engine you could possibly imagine. So if any of you guys need parts, I'll leave his number down below, give him a call. But anyways, um, I called him up and told him exactly what I needed for this poor engine. And he sent it all right along. Um, so now we've got a brand new, new old stock connecting rod. Got a good used air filter assembly with riser pipe. He sent along a whole new backing plate because ours is really rusted out here. Um, we've got a new shroud for the back. New pinion gear. Points condenser. And I even got some new um, head studs things. So spacers and a spark kill tab. And then also while you guys weren't looking, I went ahead and I freed up the starter um, ring gear from the, sh the shroud which was ridiculously stuck on there. Um, I ended up having to drill that, or cut that that uh, piece off there, that pin, so I have to drill that out or punch it out and put a new one in. But despite the rot here, I think it's gonna be usable. I think it'd be kind of funny to keep it just to show how bad this engine was when I found it. But uh, I got that freed up without breaking the housing, so I'm happy about that. And yeah, so now I think at this point we have basically all the parts that uh, we need to get this thing running. So, figured, uh, why not start reassembly, see if we can't get this thing back together. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and start with the backing plate, get that all put back together, and then maybe we'll throw the piston and rod back in and everything, and the two valves, and, uh, see if we can't get this thing to fire off later today. So, anyways, let's dive right into it. Alright, so we got it sitting up on its face here. I'm just going to start by taking everything off the old backing plate, because it all needs to get transferred over to the new one. And then we can very carefully pop this off and try and save the uh, the gaskets and whatnot that are behind there. One other thing I forgot to mention that I did was I went ahead and cleaned up the cylinder just a little bit. Uh, there was some rust at the bottom and whatnot that I wanted to take care of. All right, so we got the backing plate off. Uh, I ended up peeling all the crap off this coil here and taking the uh, the plug wire off because that that sleeve around it, I'm pretty sure. Well, A, I'm pretty sure it's asbestos, um, and B, the, the plug wire was just starting to fall apart. Um, apparently, at some point, somebody soldered this here, which you're not supposed to do. Um, but I'll go grab my soldering iron and uh, take that out, put a new plug wire on it. And um, the only other thing is that I was not able to save this gasket, unfortunately. I don't know if this is asbestos either. It's white fiber, so it might be. So, just to be safe, rather than sorry, I'm gonna just soak that in oil. And uh, I'm gonna wear my respirator and we're gonna scrape this off here. And then I'm gonna have to make a new one because this gasket, believe it or not, actually sets your crank and play on these engines. So, um, Use the oil, try and keep some of the fibers down, just in case. And I'm going to wear my respirator. And uh, going to go ahead and grab my razor blade, scrape that off. I'll make a new gasket, and then we'll try and prep that uh, backing plate to reinstall. So I'm going to come back once I get that done, because that's going to be very boring to watch. Alrighty guys, so I went ahead and made a new gasket for this and installed a new backing plate. Um, I can't remember if I said this earlier or not, but the original uh, plug wire was junk. So I went ahead and took the soldering iron, cleared that out because somebody soldered it at some point, which you're not supposed to do. Um, but we got the hole clear there and uh, put some new plug wire through here. So uh, I'm going to go just start reassembling everything here. 
What I've always been told you're supposed to do is just take the, the uh, wire for the plug, feed it through the hole in the coil, and just wrap it around. So that's what I'm going to do. Actually, you know what, right before we put this back on, we should probably put the stationary point in. It's going to make it a little easier for us. That screws in here. Like so. And when you have the coil on, it gets much more difficult to get access to. And I'm actually going to go ahead and put the... Uh, well, after we screw this in a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and put the points on and gap them now. So now I'm going to go ahead and take some pliers and just turn this until we get about 20 thousandths worth of gap. And then once we're there, we'll tighten down the slot nut that's on here. Go ahead and grab my feeler gauge here. Cool, so that's done. Now we can go ahead and feed this back. Seat this coil in. Just gonna make sure that this plunger is working as it should. Yep, looks like it. Go ahead and install the condenser next. Throw a little dust cover back over the points here. And then we can reinstall the uh, coil screws. back into place a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna throw the key in there, grab the flywheel, stick it on. Let's make sure we still got spark. All right, got the flywheel back on here. Cut the plug wire to size, see what happens. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, we have no spark. So, obviously I screwed something up here. Trying to figure out what it was. All right, so I went ahead and I fiddled around with the points a little bit. I figured out that A, they weren't closing like they should have been, and B, they were actually still dirty. So I took a little sandpaper, cleaned them up, and now I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but See if I can't get you guys a better shot. Hang on. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. There you go, now you can see it. You got a good spark there. So, pretty darn happy with that. That just means we can move on to the next disaster. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so I just took a look at the, uh, the camera time and I realized this video is already getting pretty pretty up there in terms of length so uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and do is call this one the end of part one and we'll make this a two-part video uh, already super super happy with the progress we've made so far we got the engine all torn apart and uh, we got the valves unstuck we got the piston out we got spark back and I already got that new mag plate and everything reinstalled uh, behind the flywheel here and everything too so uh, definitely chugging right along and uh, like I said, I think this is going to end up being a two-part video, so stay tuned for part two. 
But anyways, thank you all for watching. If you like what you see, hit the little like and subscribe buttons. I'd appreciate that. By all means, leave a comment if you have one. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay tuned for part two coming in the next couple weeks. Bye.